Fine. There we go. Okay, forgot about my microphone there. <laughs> so good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Signpost Live. I forgot to put the proper intro there. I was playing the Wisdom Transmissions Gathering by mistake, but I was kind of in a hurry to get everything going. As you can see, I'm still kind of uh, in a bit of a rut trying to get everything ready to go here. So anyways, I hope you're all doing well. Thank you for joining me for this Thursday for the Signpost Live. We are going to be looking into the role of Russia <clears throat> for 2024. We're going to be getting into that in just a few minutes. I hope everybody is doing well today. I'm already starting to see that uh, people are coming on and asking questions. So that's great once again. Yeah, there's sound now, guys. I just forgot to turn it on for the first few seconds. So <laughs> you guys should be hearing me okay now. So if you're hearing me okay, just go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Let me know everything is good. Okay. Looks like everything is okay on my end here for the microphone. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, some people are saying, yeah, there's 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 a video pauses every few seconds. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you guys. We're in Mercury retrograde, right? So you're going to have some screw-ups pertaining to some technical issues. Everything on my end here is working good. So if there's a little bit of glitches in between, we have to deal with it, right? Not much I can do on my side. Uh, we have everything pretty much running as we need to. Okay. Um, let me just double check my Wi-Fi connection. Looks like everything is okay. Um, yeah, looks like everything's okay on my end, so everything's fine there. Like I said, guys, it's Mercury retrograde, so you may have some problems. Uh, hopefully, everything holds out okay. If it's glitching for a few seconds, I understand. <laughs> But uh, like I said, we could have some issues here with it being Mercury retrograde. It's a pretty brutal Mercury retrograde. I've actually had nothing but technical issues all this morning, trying to access apps, trying to get on the internet, all that stuff like that. So Mercury retrograde, <laughs> if there's glitches, hey, that's okay, right? If there's no glitches, you guys are getting this seamlessly perfect, then we're good to go. Okay. <laughs> A lot of, lot of Mercury retrograde shenanigans going on today. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and get started firstly with some announcements, and then we'll get right into uh, today's uh, broadcast because I do have a second camera and I do have my tarot deck. So we're going to be looking into a Zodiac spread regarding Russia for 2024. First and foremost, we'll look into some announcements. Okay, here we go. Source Energy enhanced products to repair and rejuvenate the body. From the power of light to crystals to bed kits, card decks, and more. View our free samples, tutorials, and testimonials on our website, etherx.co. Okay, so we're looking at etherx.co here. And again, we do have a discount that is taking place. Here's the Radiate app uh, ad as well, too. Uh, so we have 23% off all products store-wide. No discount code is necessary. You can just grab them right off the, off the website. You don't need to put a promo code in. Discount is included in all product prices except the Source Massage Match, which are 10% off. We only have about a dozen Source Massage Mats left. Okay, I will be getting another order here very soon, but it could take a while because it just, I have to get everything ready for it. It's all custom made. right? So if you want to grab a massage mat, now is your chance to do it. They are 10% off, okay? So again, that is etherix.co. You can find all of the different products that we have. Now, what's going to be happening is I'm actually going to be uh, removing the Taurus bed kits, okay? What's going to be taking its place are the throw blankets and pillowcases, okay? So I'm going to have a pillowcase and throw blanket combination uh, so because the, the, the companies I've been talking to in that sense, they're just extremely pricey. And my goal is really to try and make these things affordable. But unfortunately, a lot of companies out there really kind of charge an arm and a leg for production with the, the full bed kits. Okay. So what the plan is, is I'm going to be making a lot more uh, throw blankets and having pillowcases on top of it. So there'll be a throw blanket and pillowcase combination. Okay. That's really how I think the best way is going to go about because you're going to enjoy everything pertaining to the Taurus bed kit just as it is. Uh, relating to a throw blanket and to a pillowcase. And the reason I'm doing that is because it's the most affordable option. I'm not making these products for you guys to have to pay $500 or $1,000 for these products because that's basically what the uh, the amount would be 
to a lot of these products. Oh, yeah, okay, you want a duvet cover, you want a fitted bed sheet, you want pillowcases, you want this, you want that. And this is how much we're going to charge you. Like, oh my God, that's brutal, right? And that's going to cost me, like, uh, for me to give that to you guys would be close to about the $500 to $1,000 range. I don't want to do that, right? I want to basically make these things affordable for you guys. So that's why we're going to start doing the, the throw blankets and pillowcases combo. So that's going to be coming here in the next several weeks. Uh, just getting pillowcases and throw blankets ready. The throw blankets feel amazing. Like I have a few of them downstairs for the Radiate Center, uh, the Radiate Regen Center, and they feel incredible. It's that beautiful kind of Sherpa fleece. Feels wonderful. Feels great. So that's really what we're going to do. We're just going to stick with the throw blankets and the pillowcases, and that's going to be the new bed kits. Okay. As I do not want you guys paying hundreds and hundreds or even thousand dollars for a bed kit. That's insane. I'm not doing that. Right. So we want to make sure that we're getting affordable rates here. And that's really why I'm kind of picky with companies because I don't care if it's really good, good, good quality. Uh, like I said, this is for people who want to afford these things. I'm not trying to get you guys to pay thousands of dollars for this stuff. That's ridiculous, right? So that's exactly why I'm always trying to keep these things at a, at a good rate so that every common person can afford them, right? This is not about me getting rich and getting thousands of dollars off you. That's just a bunch of stupidness, right? We're trying to keep things affordable here. This is why I'm constantly giving guys discounts, right? This is why discounts are available all the time, usually on average between 20 to 23% off because I want you guys to enjoy this. I want, again, people who, again, uh, just make an average income, they're able to afford these things, right? And so just it's kind of weird just how these companies are just charging an arm and leg for things that are just supposed to be simple, right? Anyways, that's the new plan for the Taurus bed kits is having the, uh, the throw blankets and the pillowcases because that's all you need that you're going to be getting a really good charge out of those uh, two things just by themselves okay all right moving on okay so here is the radiateapp.com so radiateapp.com so the update is like i said april 16th is going to be the date where it is going to launch uh, both on ios that is the apple store and the Google Play Store as well too. Now there may be a possibility that the Google Play Store may be delayed. If there is a delay, I'll let you guys know. But it will certainly be available on the uh, Google. Uh, it's not the Google. The uh, the iOS, the Apple Store. Okay. So again, you can check out uh, RadiateApp.com. And what you want to do is just click on the sign up button here. It'll take you down to the uh, sign up form. Leave your name and your email, and you you can be uh, registered for updates through our newsletter, okay? So that's what I recommend. I'll be putting out another newsletter probably on Friday or Saturday this week. I try to do it on Fridays, but like I said, I'm just, I'm going kind of going at breakneck speed just to get Radiate ready to go, get the Radiate Region Center ready to go. Okay, this is what this is all about here, the Radiate Region Centers. The new website is about to launch for the Radiate Region Centers, okay? So that's gonna be really exciting as well too. I'll be talking about that early next week. Uh, there's also going to be some changes to the schedule pertaining to wisdom transmissions and to uh, signposts as well, too. I'm going to be have, ha start having them at 8 a.m. on Wednesdays and Thursdays, okay, 8 a.m., because at 10 o'clock, I'm going to be starting to have clients coming over here for the Radiate Regen Center. So both uh, wisdom transmissions uh, gathering and signposts are going to be rescheduled uh, at 8 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, Wednesdays and 30, Thursdays starting next week. So it's a little bit more earlier. So hope you guys can join me with that. But it'll be exciting. Okay, moving on. So this is my fiance, Brianne's uh, website here. Brianne is doing a tarot reading, energy healing, and also feng shui consultation. Okay. Now she does an absolutely incredible job, guys. Like I would re recommend if many of my clients are watching, Right? And if you want to just have one-on-one -on -one individual sessions with her, it is well worth it. She is absolutely amazing. I've seen her uh, doing her work. She does it very thoroughly. She gives her whole heart to this. Uh, she does tarot readings, kundalini healing. If you're in the Vancouver, BC area, if you're in the lower mainland, she also does in-person QHHT. Okay? She also does feng shui consultation as well, too. So this is her website. She, again, does amazing uh, tarot readings. You can basically ask her any three questions you want. She does an incredible job. I have taught her and trained her into kundalini and vibrational healing. She also intermixes that together with her Reiki 
and she gives incredible healing sessions as well too right so guys i highly recommend you're checking out ratings readings with brianne.com uh, again she'll give information in regards to flying star feng shui you can book an appointment here and again if you're local in the lower mainland of british columbia canada uh, you can sign up for quantum healing hypnotherapy she is a level two practitioner okay um so yeah check out her website that again is readings with Brienne.com. Okay, our final announcement here is wildtours.de. Okay, so this is the website here. This is where I'm going to be going to Bosnia in September. Okay, from September 15th to September 22nd, going to check out the Bosnian pyramids. Again, I'm going to be bringing in Radiate for the trip as well, too. Introducing you guys to certain tactics that you can work together with Radiate. We're also going to be using Radiate to harmonize the environment as well too because radiate has that power to do that so again we're, we're going to have an incredible time we're going to be viewing the largest pyramid in the world the ancient pyramid of the sun we're going to be looking at a lot of sacred sites we're going to be staying at some beautiful places again i'm really looking forward to it i've never been to bosnia before i'm looking forward to this incredible adventure that is happening in september okay so again you can join me just go to wildtours.de you can sign up there you can register and I'm looking forward to seeing many of you. We already have about over half the amount of the trip sold out. Okay, so we have about 45, 50% left. Okay, so I'm looking forward to uh, Bosnia come September, and I hope you guys will join me. We had an incredible time last year in England, right? Looking at crop, we got to go to two live crop circles. That was incredible. And now being able to experience the ancient pyramid of the sun is going to be amazing as well, too. All right, so. <clears throat> we're now going to go ahead and get started into today's broadcast. Uh, let me just go ahead and switch gears here a bit. I'll just give you one second, guys. Okay. okay I'm just going to move my um, screen into the extra camera here. Okay, oh, sorry. That's not what I'm on. Just give me a second, guys. I'm just <laughs> getting everything together here. Um, Okay, there we go. There we go. All right, I got my second screen together. Now we're ready to go here. We're ready to get things rolling. So as I talked about, we're going to be, whoops, let me make sure I get the banner off there. I'm still getting used to this program, so <laughs> got to kind of bear with me a little bit here. So again, we're going to be looking into uh, Russia. And the reason I'm saying this is because there is a lot of energy momentum surrounding Russia. Russia is really going to be a difference maker for the entire planet. But I want you guys to kind of see this yourselves through the tarot that I'm going to be doing with Russia today as well. So let me just make sure everything is off the screen here. So I got plenty of room so you guys can see everything. Okay. Yeah. I'm getting like tarot cards. I'm just in a fumble this morning, guys. I swear I'm in such a fumble this morning. All right. So move the mouse aside, and we're going to do a Zodiac Tarot spread on Russia to see how things are going for the momentum of Russia, what its role will be for 2024, what is it doing, uh, what is its association together uh, in regards to how it's dealing with the dark elite, with the dark cults, with the dark factions, getting an idea there, okay? So let's take a look at that. We're going to take a look at a Tarot spread involving the zodiac okay so this will be the first card here this is uh, this is the first house of aries okay i'll put it right about here second house representing taurus right about there third house representing gemini again house of communication fourth house representing cancer representing household fifth house representing leo representing intuition, representing counsel, representing our own willpower. Sixth house, representing Virgo, right? Representing labors, representing service, service to others, uh, representing enemies as well too, okay? Seventh house here, representing Libra, okay? So that can represent the nature of uh, public outlook, uh, controversy at times as well too, partnerships, okay? Going into the eighth house, representing uh, Scorpio, scandals, secrecy, revealed, exposures, death. Okay. Ninth house, representing that of uh, Sagittarius. 
Okay, so this can represent a good fortune card, good fortune or foreign travel, uh, things about the father, for example, too. Okay, tenth house representing that of the Queen of Cups. So again, that is Capricorn, that is government, that is status, that is popularity. Eleventh okay. house representing that of Aquarius. Okay, so this too represents gains. This too can represent the idea of friendships. It can represent the idea of uh, certain degrees of status as well, too. It can also represent truth-seeking as well, too. And we have the 12th house representing Pisces. So Pisces can represent loss. Pisces can also represent charity. It can also represent compassion. It can represent, again, more selfless service as well, too. Okay. And then we have the 13th card right in the middle about how we are impacted by everything that's going on here in this deck. Okay. So again, guys, just give me a minute as I organize everything here on my desk. My desk is in shambles, so I'm just trying to organize everything, get everything together. Okay. All right. I have my other cards here. I'm just going to be setting those up here momentarily. Let me go ahead and go to comments. <clears throat> so I'm going to interpret this reading here in just a moment. Let me just get some other cards here set up. I don't use uh, Oracle decks or anything of that nature. I'm really just a tarot guy. So I'm just getting these other cards. These are other cards that tell me a little bit more about the houses. Okay. So I'm just kind of setting them up as well, too, as I'm still learning a lot more about Vedic astrology. Vedic astrology is something I've been exploring for about a year or two now, and I'm enjoying it. It's very interesting, very accurate, too, as well. I always find that Vedic astrology would be the most accurate of all the other forms of astrologies. Okay. Uh, let me just go ahead and change my screen. There we go. That looks better. All right, so first house, like I said, represents the nature of Aries, okay, and represents the nature of Libra. Okay, so the first and seventh house that are aspecting each other. So here we have the first house of Aries, and we see the two of wands, okay? Russia is making a serious impact upon the entire planet. They are, let's, let's like I've talked about before, they are the driving force that represents the alliance, right? They kind of feel like the uh, the head leaders. They feel like the head administrators representing everything that's taking place uh, with the world right now. So like I've talked about, the entire cabal is being hunted down, right? They're, they're basically just being dismantled. It's very interesting because if you tuned in yesterday to Wisdom Transmissions Gathering, uh, Adronis, let me just go ahead and take these off. I don't need those headphones on. Adronos was talking a lot about uh, planet Earth moving into an ascendancy, right? Moving up into a higher heaven. And in order for that to happen, all of the riffraff, all the nether energies, right? If you're looking at a nether world in that sense, or as I refer to as a nether energies, all of that needs to be purged from the planet. Russia is taking a very big charge, taking, taking a great charge of that, okay? So we're looking at health, we're looking at personality, we're looking at status, we're looking at nature, we're looking at general happiness, well-being, and vitality, okay? Russia is in good shape, okay? It is not weakened, it is not in trouble, it is not crippled in any way. It is a strong, powerful force. And a lot of what Russia is doing, a lot of other countries are working along with them, okay? They are, again, part of a very large alliance, and that alliance consists of perhaps even hundreds of countries, right? So there is a great deal of uh, backing, support, vitality, well-being of Russia. Russia is more than capable of getting this job done to completely and totally release the nether energies from this planet. And that's exactly what's happening. And that's why you always see the Western world just bashing Russia to bits, thinking that Russia is a horrible enemy, uh, trying to paintbrush them into certain images that they are not, okay? And this is aspecting together with Libra, okay? Libra is all about love or business travel. It's about public eye. It's about business, moral conduct, controversy, sometimes war. Also relates to money, to intellect, and to passion, okay? So we're seeing here that this is a slow and steady progress. So Russia is basically leading the charge to clean up the entire planet. And this is a slow and steady process, but the value, the material transformation that's taking place, because we do have the knight 
of pentacles here. This is indicating that this is a slow and steady process. It is going to be gradual, but it's succeeding. It's succeeding very, very well. The public eye, in that sense, may be aware. I mean, uh, basically, uh, Russia just came out recently talking about uh, Jesus, talking about how Jesus was a black man, right? And there's been a lot of people uh, all over the world who have, uh, who have also talked about that, that Jesus was a black man, that a lot of these great prophets of our ancient past were actually black people, right? Now, again, you're looking at all of these psychotic Christian groups, specifically around the, the Bible belt of the United States, always believing that Jesus was not only a white person, but he was an American. <laughs> so with this information coming about, because Russia has recently released that, uh, that's going to cause a lot of stir up in religious circles. And that's all part of it. These are all part of, again, stones being turned, right? So again, through the first and the seventh house here, we are seeing that there is indeed a worldwide cleanup. Not a single stone is being left over unturned. And it is proceeding. It's a bit of a slow, gradual process, but it's proceeding. The idea of it trying to be made into a world war will not happen. A lot of people are thinking about that. Oh, Russia is going to try and start a world war, or Iran is going to try and start a world war. No, it's, it's not, right? We've been hearing that for many years, and we're way past that energetic right now. The earth is attempting to purge a lot of the nether energies out of herself and trying to bring about a world war is only going to bring about more of those energies, right? So there is in that sense, a secret war that's happening, but it's not leading to the calamity like a first or second world war would. This is again, a secret war, a quiet war, a silent war, a shadow war that has been taking place. And it has actually been taking place for quite some time. Okay. So let's move on into the second house here. The second house represents the seven of swords and it is aspected with Scorpio, okay? Scorpio here representing the ace of, ace of Pentacles, okay? So we have the second house, which represents Taurus. And what does Taurus itself represent? Well, Taurus represents speech, sociability, wealth, stability, security, immediate family, food and drink, and oral traditions, okay? A lot of it can be around wealth, movable, liquid assets, but also about stability and security as well, too, okay? So there definitely has been a hijacking relating to all those things. Our financial system has been hijacked. Our stability, our feeling of security has been hijacked. But at the same time, it's all under control, <laughs> which is what Scorpio is telling here, because Scorpio, too, is all about scandals. It is all about secrecy. It is about uh, inheritance, accidents, longevity, ancient oral traditions, death, unexpected torment, a loss, keeping secrets, and even sexuality as well, too. But I'm not really saying anything in regards to sexuality here. So again, we're looking at security and stability and monetary situations. We're seeing that everything truly is pretty much switch, switched over. This is telling me that in front of the scenes, people are seeing things that are unstable. They're seeing things that are insecure. They're seeing, again, the nature of wealth up in shambles. But over here, it's telling me, actually, all those things are under control. <laughs> this, again, is telling me that there is a coming-of-age ceremony that this all represents, because, like I said, none of it makes sense. If you're looking on the TV, if you're looking on the Internet and trying to believe that all of these things are up in the air, it's telling you here it's not, right? All of this just seems like it's up in the air. Everything feels like it's unstable. Everything feels like it's insecure. Everything feels like the world is broke, but it's not. That's a scandal. That's a secrecy. But behind the scenes, when you clear away all of the fog, when the dust settles, you're noticing that pretty much all of the wealth is basically in the East now. And Russia has a very large uh, hold on that wealth, right? So when the smoke clears, when the smoke screen starts to fade away, even though we're seeing all these things on television, we're seeing these things in the mainstream media, where it looks like everything's in chaos and everything's in shambles, it's not. This is controlled chaos. This, again, is Hollywood. This is like being on a soundstage and watching all of these pyrotechnic explosions going off, but at the same time, everything's controlled. All right, well, we got some eerie lighting going on. We got some pyrotechnics. We got some big blasts coming together. 
but it's all controlled. This is all controlled. This is all engineered. Everything that's happening on the planet right now pertaining to these situations with these countries and everything is all engineered. It's like a puppet show. There's all these strings here. None of it is real. It's a Hollywood soundstage. It's a three ring circus. It looks like there's disasters. looks like there's terrible things happening with governments and all that stuff, but that's all a show. It's all part of exploitation, which again is what Scorpio represents. It's exploitation. It's revealing of secrecy. It's scandals. It's things that have been hidden that are now engineering themselves to come into the light. It's controlled demolition. That's what's going on here. That's exactly what this, this uh, card is saying. Because again, we have everything with Taurus pertaining to stability and security and finances. And it looks like it's in a muck. It looks like it's just running around. It looks like it's a thief in the night. They're trying to steal everything. It's nothing for them to steal, right? Whatever they think they're stealing, they're not going to get away with anything. Because again, this is all a smokescreen. None of this is real. And I don't know how many times I've said that. It just keeps coming up in these readings all the time. <laughs> It's a smokescreen. Everything truly is behind the scenes in a balanced, secure, and stable nature. It's just made to look like it isn't because we're watching an old system die. The old system that, again, was running amok, that was corrupt to the bone, is dying. It's completely fading out. We're watching it die. We're watching it become frantic. We're watching it just seem like it's becoming an insane psychopath that's just hooked up to a life support machine ready to just try and blow everybody away with a shotgun right but like i said it's all they're really doing is just making a ruckus and we're going to be watching that old system die and this is the decade to where that old system dies okay so let's move on to the third house okay so third house representing gemini okay and again if we're looking at gemini we know it's about communication we also know it's about siblings, it's about skills, arts, the active body and mind. It's also about enterprise. It's also about courage and strength, uh, short aspects of travel. Communication is one of the big parts of it and personal hobbies. So it also represents enterprise and courage at the same time. And here's courage and here's Russia. And I think Russia is going to be really stepping up their disclosures a lot more. They're gonna be stepping out a lot more exposure because here is the Knight of Swords, right? New thinking, new ideas, new innovations. They may even be revealing new technologies. It would not surprise me if they, if they are actually the country that brings out anti-gravitation, anti-gravitational vehicles, okay? New innovations, new ideas, new information. Again, Gemini is all about communication. It's about active body and mind. It's about strength. It's about courage as well too. And Russia is more than willing to step up to the plate and say, okay, guys, here's anti-gravity. Here's anti-gravitational technology. Here's the TR-3Bs, right? And they're actually starting to bring that out. Would not surprise me at all, okay? And that is what the third house is all about. It is about communication, okay? What is that aspecting with? Well, that is aspecting with the ninth house, which represents uh, Sagittarius. And Sagittarius, if we're looking at Sag, we can look at good fortunes and uh, luck. I never really subscribed to luck though. Spiritual path, foreign travel, positivity, higher knowledge. And that's a very big one. Higher knowledge, pilgrimage with purpose and the nature of the soul. Okay. So there is a higher purpose here going on. So to me, this feels like there's, there's definitely been a lot of resistance and there's like shaking their finger and saying, Russia, don't you dare. Don't you try and re re release that stuff. Screw you. <laughs> We'll release it if we damn well feel like it and because time's up for you. So I feel like Russia uh, itself is going to be a very large ambassador for revealing new technologies, for revealing new truths, for revealing new grounds of innovation that we could only dream of that maybe we've read about in science fiction books or watched on sci-fi TV and, and movies and all that, right? I feel like this is just the beginning. They basically blew the lid off the nature of Jesus admitting that he was a black man, right? And talking about a lot of these other ancient prophets who are also black people, okay? That is a huge release. That is a huge exposure. And from what I can tell here from Russia and saying, you haven't seen anything yet, right? This is more, there's more coming. 
we got more juicy stuff like this. And like I said, from what I'm feeling here, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if a lot of these innovations that they're going to start releasing is going to transform the technological innovation of the entire planet. My feeling is that if we're looking at anti-gravitational vehicles, you're going to look towards Russia. My feeling is that they may also start talking more about pyramid technology. They may start talking more about torsion technology. They may start talking more about etheric technology, huh? Things that I've talked about relating to etherics, right? And I fear Russia may be doing that as well, too. They are going to drop such enormous technological innovative bombshells that is going to really shake the entire foundation of the planet. So, guys, if you are looking for anti-gravitational technology to be revealed to the planet, you would probably look towards Russia. Russia is going to reveal it because they already have a lot of anti-gravitational technology that's available. They've been running it through their laboratories. They've been running it through uh, their facilities, their installations. They have the tech. They have tech that is so incredible. It even blows away a lot of the tech that a lot of the Western countries have gotten from the greys. And basically, a lot of the greys have been kind of the associates relating to the Western world reverse technology, whereas Russia has even more advanced technology than that. Right? And this is coming from, again, the ancients, as I would refer to them as. These are coming from the ancient races. This is coming from basically our predecessors. Right. And they are going to be revealing some big truths here. And it wouldn't surprise me if this is happening this year because it's all about what is the role of Russia for 2024. We may see some really big announcements coming together. It could be anti gravitational technology. It could be working with torsion fields. It could be working with the toroidal field. It could be working with scalar. Okay. I mean, I'm already working with scalar for radiate. Okay. Sandra Rose Michael has been telling people about uh, scalar through the EE systems. So it's not a really big stretch <laughs> about all of this. So we're seeing some major innovations that are going to come about. And like I said, there's 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 going to be the idea of countries getting angry, getting upset because Russia's like, well, F you guys. I'm going to tell everybody. <laughs> this is basically what's happening, right? These other wands are kind of like the other countries, basically, that may still be under influence of the dark cult. And Russia's standing here saying, screw you guys. I'm going to tell everybody. I'm going to tell people about anti-gravitation. I'm going to tell people about uh, technologies like the TR3Bs. I'm going to tell people about torsion field energy. I'm going to talk to people about uh, pyramid research that we have done. I'm going to talk to people about scalar. I'm going to be talking to people about biofeedback technology and advanced technology that we can use to basically create new healing centers that will bring people into greater health far greater than the idea of anything that has been shared here, right, in regards to the Western medicine, right? I think it's going to turn everything in regards to what is happening on this planet. Uh, it's going to turn everything into something far greater. There's going to be a greater revealing coming about. And Adronis was talking about that yesterday as well, too, is that during the probably perhaps the summertime, there's some sort of major event that's coming. We can't say if it's positive or negative, but it's something that is really going to shift the entire framework of, how, of what we know is happening on this planet. Okay, So there's big surprises coming together, and I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be very, very interesting. You guys have to make up your own mind about how you see Russia, how you see Putin, how you see anybody. I'm not here to convince you that Putin is this or that Putin is that, because I'm not really focusing on Putin. I'm focusing on Russia. I'm not focusing on a president. I'm not focusing on a politician. He's a spokesperson. Simple as that. Just like Trump at some particular point, if he does get back into office, he will be a spokesperson mostly for the Western world. P Putin is mostly a spokesperson for the Eastern world. But this is not about Putin. This is not about a politician. This is about the country of Russia and its role that it's playing in the year of 2024. I really couldn't care less of what people think about Putin because I'm not talking about Putin. I'm talking about Russia, right? So please bear that in mind as we do this reading. Okay, now we're gonna go into the fourth house. The fourth house here is aspecting together with the 10th house, which is Capricorn, but here's the fourth house, which is Cancer. Okay, so we have the wheel of fortune here with the, with the Cancer. 
And Wheel of Fortune, as we know, is turning something upside down. Something that was a certain polarity is about to flip. And I would say secrecy is about to flip. So if we're looking at cancer, we're looking at uh, mother. Uh, we're looking at something that represents the homestead, right? Education, fixed property, uh, vehicles, ancestors, warmth, happiness, emotional community. Okay. So I would say that this is impacting the entire worldwide community. Oh, my God, this has been revealed. I mean, like, look what happened with Putin revealing about Jesus. That flipped everything upside down. You have not seen anything yet. There's a lot more that's going to be flipped. There's going to be a lot more that is going to just leave people in shock. You guys have any idea what kind of technology a lot of these countries have that are contained behind these massive blast doors, these installation doors, these vaults? They are incredible technology. You have portal technology, you have teleportation technology. You have uh, particular technology that is things that we've talked about through secret space program. We're looking at technology that can completely revolutionize everything, right? Guys, I couldn't care less about what you think of Putin, okay? We're not talking about Putin. We're talking about Russia here. Whether you think he is a saint or whether you think he is a sinner, don't care, right? This is things that are happening. This is Russia's role. And I'm talking about the country of Russia. I'm not talking about Putin. I'm not talking about any of his associates. I'm not talking about a person. We are talking about a country here, guys, a country. And what is the country's role in 2024? Okay. And what we're seeing here is we're seeing that information is going to be coming out of that country. We're not really too concerned about how that's going to happen, who the ambassador is, who the representative is, who cares. What matters here is we're seeing that information is held in Russia's hand that is going to completely transform everything relating to the landscape on this planet, right? So again, we're seeing that the Wheel of Fortune is aspecting together with the 10th house, right? So here we go with the 10th house. This is representing uh, Capricorn. And as we see with Capricorn, Capricorn represents uh, the status, career, position, reputation, power, structure, authority, education, primary activities, government, fame, okay? So again, we're seeing things here of a big surprise. We're seeing some emotion. This is a very spiritual card as well, too. An emotional card, a spiritual card, okay? So we have a woman on a throne, and there is a veil over a cup, which means she doesn't really know what's there yet, but it looks like something is going to be revealed, okay? And that is going to be the complete and total shakeup of what we would know as government of how it plays the games on this planet. It looks like this veil over the cup is going to be pulled off. And we're going to see something very, very surprising because this, again, is aspecting together with the fourth house. So community, right, the, the population of the planet, uh, whether you, again, love Russia or not, doesn't matter. Don't really care if you do or not. That's not important. I don't really care, guys, what beliefs are in regards to Russia. Russia is a country here. Russia exists. Russia has a role to play. And I really don't care if you're concerned about a certain representative or a certain president. We're not looking at that. You have to get out of these blind sights, these veils that are obstructing you from seeing the signposts. That's why a lot of you guys can't see the signposts because you have an idea, you put a belief, and rather than looking at an entire country, you're just immediately pop popping onto a person. That's again, if we're looking at the United States, oh, Trump, or if we're looking at the United States, oh, Biden, if we're looking at Canada, oh, Trudeau. That's not what we're doing, guys. We're looking at the collective energy of a country, okay? We're not looking at its politics. We're not looking at its figureheads. We're not looking at its representatives, right? We're looking at the country together. I really don't care if you believe me or not. I couldn't give a shit, right? This is what's coming together in the cards, and this is a perspective that I'm giving you guys, and you guys will have to make up your own mind about these things. I'm not here to tell you what's the gospel, what's written in stone or not, right? You guys have the power to do that. This is a perspective. This is what I'm giving you. 
Just keep that in mind. It's exactly what Adronis says all the time. Everything that's being shared here is a perspective, is a point of view. You guys just have to make up your own damn minds about what you feel you believe, about what you feel is going on. And hey, that's great. I'm always happy to hear other perspectives about what you guys are coming up with as well, too. And I do. I hear perspectives from others as well, too. And all I'm doing is giving a perspective because I see some people on the chat here. Like, oh, my God, Brad's talking about Russia and Russia's evil and Russia's this and it's a bunch of bullshit. Blah, blah. Guys, I couldn't give a shit if you think something is bullshit. Who gives a crap? Right. This is exactly what's coming through the reading. This is what I'm sharing to you through perspective. And if I'm being a little bit uh, blunt here, well, hey, that's my nature, right? But I'm giving you guys a perspective to look at. And I'm not saying you guys need to swallow this down and thinking that this is it, right? Like I said, you guys have your own perspectives as well too. And that's great. And that's fantastic. And I'm happy that you do. But please understand that what I'm telling you here is not the gospel. It's not written on a stone. It's not written on a uh, piece of parchment thinking that this is the gospel. This is what's happening. I'm giving you guys a perspective. And I'm just basically sharing through spirit what's coming together here. Can you guys handle that? Well, that's up to you. Okay. Not my problem whether you can handle this or not. I couldn't care less. Nonetheless, this is being shared. Okay. So like I said, the fourth house and the 10th house coming together, this is telling me that there are some very big surprises that are coming from Russia. Okay. If you guys don't believe, then hey, like I said, look into these things yourself and maybe just wait a little bit longer. We'll see how things go over the next few weeks, over the next few months, because we're still just beginning 2024. We're in the fourth month of this year. There's still a lot more to come with 2024. But it looks like Russia is going to be bringing about some big information because, like I said, look at what they did, guys. Who was the country that was responsible for revealing that Jesus was a black man? Was it China? No. Was it United States? No. Was it Israel? No. Was it Australia? No. It was Russia. Right? Kind of putting the signposts together now, right? We're seeing that, and that's just the beginning, right? We just got to get out of the hard-headedness and say, okay, well, this is a perspective that I'm seeing, and maybe I'll be open to it. Again, Brad doesn't have all the answers. I certainly don't, but I'm just giving you guys a perspective here. This is just something to help you guys see, and I'm helping you to see the signposts. And signposts can change, but we're getting a lot of good revealing here, a lot of good confirmation of a lot of things that are happening. Right. Now let's go to the next set here. Let's go to the fifth house, which represents justice. And that is aspecting the 11th house, which uh, again is the moon. But again, we're looking at Aquarius and here we're looking at Leo. OK, so let's take a look at Leo. What does Leo represent? Leo represents children, discernment, minds, inclination, intellect, strength, charisma, creativity, advice, intuition, counsel. OK. So we're looking at strength, we're looking at intuition, we're looking at counsel, we're looking at the intellect, we're looking at advisements, okay? We're looking at counseling. So this is justice, okay? And guys, I'm only telling you what the cards are telling me. If you think that this is just Brad's belief systems and stuff like that, that's not the case. I'm just telling you exactly what the cards are telling me, just giving you a perspective here, right? So I know when I'm looking at this stuff, I'm getting people, I can tell people are getting hot when I'm talking about Russia. And I'm like, why are you guys so hot? Do you guys know Russia personally? Do you go across the country? Are you looking at them? Are you talking to the people? Have you ever gone to Russia? Right? I certainly have. That's why I don't have an opinion about them. I'm just looking at this through a perspective. Right? But why people are so hot when we look at Russia is, is kind of a mystery to me. Why are you guys getting so hot about it? Right? You been there? Have you looked and seen what's happening in Russia in person? Or is all your ideas coming from media? Is it coming from brainwashing? Something to look into, right? So here's the justice. Here's the counseling. And this is aspecting together with the 11th house, which represents Aquarius. Okay? 
And we're looking at Aquarius. We're looking at elder siblings, families, friends, gains, desires, goals, free spirited, social clubs, entertainment, wealth, income from career. Okay. So we're looking at things that mainly move into gains and goals and free spiritedness. Okay. There is a justice here that's going to be happening that's going to be putting a lot of the old elite behind bars. Okay. And I feel like this is already starting to happen. So when we're looking at this, which represents gains, we're basically seeing, and to me, this feels like a prison. This feels like, again, those in that sense who have been trying to run the show, who has been trying to uh, put a lot of corrupt ideas in people's heads, are basically on the run. That's, again, telling me that justice is happening here. There's strength here. There's charisma here. There's counsel here. There's advisement here. It's a strong action. Leo is, all, is a lion. It's all about action. It's all about tackling down. Uh, that's what it seeks. It's prey. And it feels like the dark forces here represent its prey, and it is taking it down, okay? And again, I know a lot of people think that Russia is horrible, Russia is the enemy, Russia is nasty, uh, it's, it's a country full of murderers, really. And you think the United States is such a saint itself? How many countries has the United States taken over throughout the decades? How many countries has it attempted to umbrella relating to a lot of its democratic status quo bullshit, saying we're bringing democracy to these countries? Have you looked at the United States recently? And if you're guys talking about the nature of, of murder and thinking that Russia is a bunch of murderers, how about the United States invading other countries, dropping off their troops and killing millions? You think the United States is such a saint? Just something for you to look at, right? These are things, again, that's giving you different perspectives here, guys. You have basically looked at these things, and all we're doing here is looking at the country of Russia. From what I'm seeing here, I don't see murder. From what I'm seeing here, I don't see dominion takeover. I don't see them trying to control the world and every, everybody becomes Russian. Okay, I'm not seeing that at all. But what about the United States? Well, that's certainly been their goal. They want to turn every particular country into America. That sounds like a dictatorship to me. Okay, now I'm only giving you guys more perspective here about looking at these things with a little bit more of clarity rather than having this hard edge to yourself and thinking that Russia is the enemy and Russia is horrible and Russia is doing this and Russia is doing that. And I'm not being a spokesperson advocate for Russia, but I'm looking at these things from a neutral perspective. And what I can see here from the tarot through uh, what I can see here with the Zodiac spread, I'm not seeing anything about a dominion takeover. I'm not seeing a tower. I'm not seeing people being cast out into the cold. I'm not seeing anything like that. I'm seeing justice. I'm seeing something here that is very, very powerful that is being brought forward into the dark forces here, into the dark cults, right? The gains in that sense is that a lot of these dark cults that have been brainwashing, manipulating, creating wars, screwing people out of money, messing up the entire financial system, doing everything that is 100,000 miles long to everything that you don't do on this planet. I'm seeing that justice is basically coming to them. This is what the cards are telling me. Okay, sorry, this is the moon. I'm talking about the moon, not this one. This one is Pisces. So looking at the moon here, right, with justice and the moon, okay? So like I said, they are basically taking down deception. They are taking down the ones who are the manipulators. They are taking down the ones who are the deceivers. And like I said, I think they're going to really spill the beans on a lot of technologies, on a lot of truths, on a lot of hidden secrets that have been kept under a vault for a very long time. So a lot of here pertaining to the moon is representing uh, justice is being taken down, is, is happening to those who have been bringing about deception, okay? Deception itself is being taken down. There's going to be a lot of clarity, and, and you're right, a lot of people are going to get p pissed off. People are going to get really pissed off by all of this truth that's coming together, and that's, that's going to be expected, right? People are going to be angry and upset that there are all these truths that are coming together and that a country a very large country, probably the largest country in the world, is revealing all of this stuff. And we basically have to look to the east 
to find out a lot of these truthful states that are happening when our own countries don't have the balls to do it themselves. Now, what does that tell you about a country whose leaders won't even tell you the truth? Seems to me that our political arena and our leaders are all full of shit, right? And Russia is the only one that actually has the balls to bring about this information, telling you the truth about the history of Jesus, about the ancient prophets that were black people. And here we have had hundreds of years of racial wars over what? Stupid ignorance by dumb leaders who don't have the balls to tell you the truth because they're afraid to lose their greed. And they will piss all over you because they want to keep their secrets. Well, there's your country. There's your country led by all these leaders who are giving you a bunch of garbage and thinking, oh, we know what the people want. We know what the people want. And it's a bunch of crap. And Russia is actually coming out and they're actually sharing this information. We need to look at all the things of what we think is evil. We need to look at all these things that we think is controversial. Right? This is all I'm telling you guys is to help you see the signposts. And this, again, is what this is telling you in card form, in tarot form. Right? Let's go into the sixth house here, which represents Virgo. And Virgo itself represents obstacles, enemies, disease, health, service, debt, routines, litigation, labor, body afflictions, anxiety. So obstacles and enemies. Okay. And health and service. Obstacles, enemies, health and service. Well, again, from Russia's role here, it looks like they're ready to reveal some really big truths. They're going to probably turn the medical industry on its head. They're probably going to turn, again, a lot of medical technology on its head. They're going to be telling again, I think, like I said, this feels like they are an ambassador for a lot of things that are going to come about that is going to shift the entire ground stability of what we think medical technology is, all different forms of technology. But basically, like I said, with, with Virgo, we're looking at health, we're looking at uh, obstacles, right? <clears throat> we're looking at uh, disease. So this is basically telling me about the medical industry. And I feel like Russia has made such incredible innovations. I actually have a piece of Russian technology here in my house. It's called a bio well. And it does an incredible job of looking at the energetics of your body to let you know how your organs are doing, your glands are doing, your bodily systems are doing, even works with your chakra centers. This is something that comes right out of Russia. There's nothing like that in the States, nothing like that in the Western world. Because the Western world basically wants to pump you guys with pharmaceutical drugs, give you a bunch of vaccinations, then while you're completely in a crippled state, shake you dry with every single penny that you have. Right? Am I telling lies here, guys? Or am I actually telling you something that you already know, but again, maybe it's not clicking in? Am I telling lies? I telling lies when a pharmaceutical company basically wants to pump you guys with a bunch of vaccinations that wants to fill, fill you with a bunch of pharmaceutical drugs that do nothing, that are basically bringing you into a zombified state. Whereas we're looking at Russia and they're well documented for looking at the ethereal bodies. They're looking at the subtle bodies. They're looking at chakra medicine. They're looking at energetics. They're being able to measure your own biofeedback rhythms. It's basically a lot of stuff, the type of technology that I've been looking into, again, with etherics, because they have technology that can charge your cells. They have technology that can rejuvenate you. And Russia has had that for quite some time. In fact, I'd say they've been the forefront, probably right ahead of China, right? Uh, India is starting to get into that alignment too as well. The Eastern world has actually had a lot more beneficial medicinal technology than the crappy little Western world has ever had because they're full of shit. That's why. And all they care about is making you sick, making you crippled, and then basically just trying to hang you upside down and shake every single penny loose. There's your beloved Western world. 
That's what it's doing. And this is what I'm attempting to tell, guys, is that even when I've told clients as well, too, I would say really look into Eastern medicine, right? I'm not putting down people who are surgeons or anything of that nature. There's a necessity for that. But again, if we're looking at a pharmaceutical business that is all about not bringing you a cure, but rather just making you numb, making you zombified, how many people are in institutions that are suffering, especially around the Western world? just even over ridiculous things, right? Oh, you have ADHD, you have autism, let's drug you. And if you're out of the normalcy, let's put you in an insane asylum, let's put you in an institution. What madness is this? We're so flamed up with Russia, but you guys aren't even looking at the Western world or what the Western world is doing. Because if I was to look at the Western world here, I can guarantee you it'd be a very different reading. And basically, they are much more in the alignment of playing the three-ring circus to hide this stuff from you, whereas Russia is not. And I'm telling you that because of what I'm seeing here in this reading. Russia is doing an incredible favor for the planet, right? Not through politicians, not through a leader, but through the country's energy itself. The energy of the country is doing the biggest favor for humanity and I really couldn't care less if you agree with me or not, because that's what I'm getting here through the reading, right? So the chariot here representing the sixth house that is aspecting the 12th house, which represents Pisces, okay? What does Pisces represent? Loss, expenditure, moksha, liberation, immigration, isolation, compassion, charity. You can also relate to jail and imprisonment, like what I was talking about earlier, confinement, foreign places, segregation. So everybody that is responsible for corruption, for manipulation, for loss, basically going to be going behind bars. They're going to be exposed, and it's going to be the people of the planet that is going to uh, condemn them for that, right? This isn't really going to be the responsibility of one country. Country in that sense may be the messenger, but we, the people, all near 8 billion of us here on this planet, are going to be the ones that are responsible for saying, how dare they lie to us? We're taking action right now from the east to the west. That's how it's going to go down, guys. So if you think that we're about to go into a World War III, if you think that humanity is going to be massively enslaved, you're going to be disappointed because that's not where we're going. And how many times have I talked about this? So many. I lost count. Because I keep telling people, guys, we're not getting into a World War III. And I get people emailing me all the time. Oh, Brad, oh, my God, things are so horrible. Are we moving into a WW3? No, this is indeed a secret war, but it's not an official WW3. It is not going to cost the lives of billions of people, right? There are certainly, there certainly has been casualties because a lot of people have died because they wanted to expose things and share things that could actually help to liberate humanity. And it's a lot of the people in the West that have silenced them. It's the beloved leaders who we think are these okay people that we look at the Obamas and we look at the Clintons and we look at the Bidens and you're looking at the greatest criminal cartel out of those groups by themselves. And what Putin represents is the complete and total antithesis of that. And I'm just telling you that from previous readings that I've done on him, right? It's like I've done readings on Trump and I've done readings on Putin and they do have one thing in common. They are completely passionate in liberating their countries. That's what I've found through readings of the past that I've done for both Trump because Trump is very passionate, very committed in setting the United States free. And I've done readings on Putin and he's the exact same way. He wants this information out. But again, like I said, He's a spokesperson, and he only has so much stroke. Trump is a spokesperson, and he only has so much stroke. There are higher authorities above them, and they will give them the green light when certain things can be exposed. There's a higher authority that we do not realize, and it all comes down to one man. We think an oligarch is the very thing that's running the planet. Wrong. It comes down to one man. It's one person. It's one family. It's above them. And we've never seen them. We've never heard their names spoken. 
but they're right here on the planet. And they would be, as you would say, the head honcho, the big boss, right? They would be the ones that represent the entire showing of everything that's going on here relating to infrastructure, right? We could call it a high priest. We call it the head honcho. We could call it a head administrator or anything of that nature. And I've talked about this before as well, too. Perhaps a time will come where we'll discuss it more. We'll look more into that perhaps through a reading like this as well, too. But there's times, guys, where I have to be blunt and I have to share exactly what I'm uh, getting here because this, like I said, is not coming from my perspective. This is all coming from the perspective of the cards, and I'm just being the reader of the cards. We look at now card number 13, okay, about how we react, how everything, how we're responding to this whole situation. Do you know what this card means? That is the two of swords. That means balance and peace is coming to something that was chaotic chaotic situations that have been running amok on this planet throughout 8 billion people is now going to start changing into something of a balanced perspective because this is exactly what I've been saying. That in the next few years, we will not be living in a planet like this. This earth is going to change so incredibly dramatically over the next few years, you won't even be able to recognize it. That if I tried to tell you the things that were actually going to be coming, in the next several years that would bring about Earth into such a prosperous country, none of you would believe me. Very few of you, maybe, right? Very few, because uh, I've seen it. I've gone into these visions, I've looked at it, and I said, oh my God, there's just this peace all across the planet. People are working with each other. There's new technologies that are coming about. People aren't getting sick anymore. Poverty is ending. The entire financial system is balancing out. Everything that's been hoarded is now being given back to the people. The environment is being cleaned up. Oceans are now being cleaned up. The air is now being cleaned up. Forestation is now starting to become a lot more fruitful. Things are thriving a great deal more. We're moving into new innovative technologies about things that I've talked about for years, and now we're starting to see headway of those type of technologies that are coming on the planet. There's a sneak preview, guys. How many of you believe that? And that I say that this will be happening around the 2030s. How many of you believe that? Maybe it's a few. There's so many. Oh, Brad, you're probably smoking something. <laughs> you're probably smoking something. I don't know. You're getting like, some weed on you or something like that. right? <laughs> but that's the whole idea guys. And like I said, I'm it's glad if you guys re resonate with that, but it doesn't matter. At the same time, I want you guys to see those visions too, because you can, right? I can see this happening as we get into the 2030s, which means the 2020s, you're right. It is a very hectic decade. There's a lot of uh, nastiness coming together. There's a lot of intensity. There's a lot of calamity. But as we're seeing here, that's a smokescreen. It's a smoke screen in front of the scenes that's making you look like the world's coming to an end. You know how many people thought that the world was coming to an end because of a solar eclipse, right? The lunar eclipse that was happening on April 8th, people were thinking that this is the end of the world because of all the garbage that they are looking at in front of the scenes that telling you all there is is calamity. All there is is dread. All there is is horribleness. And I'm not seeing that. I'm just not seeing that. I've never seen that. If there is something, guys, where I saw, oh, my God, there's a doomsday, there's something horrible, and it's going to mean the end of us, I would tell you. But I haven't seen it. I haven't seen anything in that that is going to lead to a major loss of life. I have not seen anything where we are completely on a prison planet full of dictators where all of your freedoms are being taken away. I have not seen that for taking place in the long run, right? There's going to be, again, uh, talk about that, pressure about that, because that's what you're seeing in the behind-the-scenes veil, right? There's all that smoke screen. Oh, yeah, we're going to take over, and nobody's going to have any more property, and, and so on and so forth, right? It just, it just goes on with a bunch of nonsensical garbage. And unfortunately, guys, 90 to 95% of what you see on the Internet is crap right? And that's just how it is. And I'm, I'm looking around for people saying, come on, is, not, is no one really seeing what I'm seeing here? And there have been a few. There have been a few people who have seen exactly what I've seen, and they're sharing it, right? Janine is one of those people, okay? And this is why I like Janine. This is why I brought Janine on, 
because she's getting similar uh, outlooks to what I'm getting, right? There's some times, again, where we look in front of the scenes and we get a little bit flustered by it, understandable completely, right? But we're starting to see, I'm starting to see that more people are actually starting to tune in and see, oh, you're right, there's no, there's no doomsday here. There's no the idea of us going into a bunch of uh, internment camps, right? There's nothing in regards to us being cast out on the street, losing everything, having no homes. Nope, it's complete opposite. There's going to come a time where everybody is going to be able to have a home. There's going to be a time where everybody is going to have access to food, to shelter, to clothing, to education, to technology. Freely. Brad, come on. Okay, you are definitely smoking a hashish pipe here. What's going on here? You're doing more mushrooms again, <laughs> right? And like I said, this is why I say if I start telling you guys about what I'm seeing here over the next decade or two of what is going to be happening, 2030s, 2040s, I don't think a lot of people would believe me, right? Because, again, this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing such an incredible wave of positivity. I'm seeing such an incredible wave of transformation because of what we do here now, because people want to investigate, because they want to intellectualize. And that's fantastic. I encourage that, absolutely. Because that's you helping to read the signposts, okay? When I'm talking about the signposts, we're giving these intuitive impulses. We're getting these intuitive messages that are coming to each of us. But because we may be very, very much in bed with lies, we don't believe it. Right? Saying, actually, you know, Russia is going to be the messenger that's going to liberate the entire planet. Brad, you're full of crap. You're like a, you're like a Putin, Putin uh, politician. You're like a Putin giver, a Putin lover in that sense. I said, I'm not talking about Putin. I'm talking about Russia. Right? I'm talking about, in that sense, the United States is actually going to get cleaned up. And you're actually going to be moving forward with a Western country that's also going to be a very big benefactor in cleaning up the planet. The United States will be doing that. Brad, come on. They're responsible for so many wars. You're right. And that's exactly why there's going to be accountability. That's exactly why there's justice. It's exactly why the illusions and the deceptions are going to be broken. Right? Because of what they've done in the past is not going to reflect what they're going to do in the future. And Russia, like I said, I'm not saying it's a saint or anything of that nature. They've certainly had their challenges as well, too. They've had their problems as well, too. But the role that they're playing is to be the messenger. They are being the messenger, and they're going to reveal a lot of stuff. The United States certainly will get to that particular point as well, too, once the swamp is cleared out. Canada will follow a role as well, too. Right now, again, they're in a smokescreen, right? So we can say the Biden smokescreen. We can say the Trudeau Castro smoke screen we can look in into the east and we can see all that royal family smoke screen but all of those smoke screens are going to start clearing away and we're going to see some treasures that were hidden under those smoke screens and like i said guys i couldn't care less if you guys believe me or not i'm only giving you exactly what spirit has shared with me what the cards are sharing with me and i want you guys to find your own answers i don't want you to think oh brad was brad says this and that must be the gospel, then I would say you're being foolish because you're putting too much energy into one person or Janine saying this, and you just completely jump into what she's saying altogether and you completely deny your own wisdom, then that's being foolish. Value the wisdom that you have because every single one of us has it, right? I'm sharing perspective. And then when you're looking in your wisdom, you may say, oh, I'm getting that too. I'm getting that too, great. What matters is that you got it through your wisdom. What matters is you got it through your intuition. What matters is you got it through your impulse. I'm just a guy, right? And I'm just sharing this stuff through a perspective, right? Because this is what's coming from my heart together here through words for all of you. And if you guys are seeing that too, through your heart and that's interlocking, great. That's what I care about. That's what I care about. It's like, Brad, I believe you 100%. Okay, great, but I don't really don't care. Because if you just believe me and you're making yourself hollow and you're not following your own intuitive instinct, we're not simpatico. Whereas you look, Brad, I understand what you're saying and I've got this myself and I can feel that there's a connection there. Perfect. That's what I'm talking about is verifying this with your own conscience. 
verifying this with your own heart, not with the ego, but with the heart. That's where there's something that I care about because there's a simpatico connection. I'm not looking for followers. I'm not looking for believers. I'm not looking for people to cling to me like a crab, right? I'm just sharing my perspective. And when people come to me because my perspective bonds together with theirs, that is what I care about. Okay. That's where I'm coming from. All right, guys, we're now going to go ahead and switch gears <clears throat> and move on to q and I'm pretty sure we have quite a bit of questions with everything that I've just shared here pertaining to Russia's role for 2024. We actually only have about 20 minutes. I got to do wrap up here at 1130. So <laughs> it was a long reading. I had a lot of stuff to share with you guys today. Okay, but let's go into some questions here. So I'm going to just kind of scroll through the list here. If you guys have any questions that you want in priority sequence, okay, you can feel free to leave a donation. Okay, and that's always appreciated. And I can get to your question faster. Okay, otherwise, I'm just kind of going to the list and seeing what we can find here. <clears throat> okay. So I'm just kind of uh, posting some people's sharings here. So Val Madness says, I don't believe I know it will absolutely, absolute certainty without a shadow of a doubt that all is well and all will be all right for humanity. And for that, Val, I agree, right? Things are shaky right now and they're supposed to be because again, it's waking people out of a trance, right? When you're trying to get somebody who's out of a trance, right? They're, they're basically just completely transfixed on an image and they're not even moving. You start kind of smacking the back of their heads. Hey, come on. Hey, what's going on there? Hello, is anybody there? And they're still in trance. You're getting out the symbols. Push, 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 push. And they're still not doing that. Okay, do I have to set fire to the rug <laughs> to get you out of this trance? Do I have to take a wrecking ball and, blow and smash half of the house apart to try and get you out of this trance? Because that's what's happened. So much of humankind has been put in a hypnotic trance. Yes, I absolutely believe what NBC is telling me. Yes, I absolutely believe what, M what Fox News is telling me. Yes, I absolutely believe what CNN is telling me. Yes, I absolutely believe what this leader is telling me. Yes, I absolutely believe what the Bidens are doing. The Bidens are good people. The Bidens are great people. They are wonderful. Ha, 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 ha. There you go. There's you in a trance. And we're doing absolutely everything we can to snap you out of it. And what do we do for that? Well, things start getting hairy. Things start getting extreme. Things start getting intense. The feeling that you're going to be losing your money. The feeling that you're going to be losing your home. The feeling that you're going to be crippled and sick because you're taking vaccines, because you're taking pharmaceutical drugs. And there's these exposures on pharmaceutical companies. And all of this stuff is just purging and fire, right? And then, oh, oh, what's happening? Oh, my God, what the hell happened to me? And now all of a sudden you're waking up and now you're saying, well, that's fake. That's fake. That's bullshit. That's garbage. That's garbage. Because now you finally snapped out of it. Right. And that's, that's the whole key here is knowing when to snap out of that trance. And I'm pretty sure most of you here that are watching me right now are already snapped out of it. Right. I don't think you'd be watching me if you were still snapped into it. Right. But that's exactly why these things are happening. It's not so much for you guys. Right. The majority of you guys are well ahead of the ball. Right. You, a lot of you do know what's going on. And I'm glad to say that because I can see it in you. Right. But we need you guys. We need you guys to start banging those symbols. Right. Start yelling from the rooftops, getting out a megaphone and waking up the sleepers. OK. And that's exactly why all this stuff has been dragging on for as long as it have. How bad do you guys want it? Hey, sleepers, sleepers, normies. How bad do you want this news to be? And it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse until you snap out of it. It's like an elastic band that just snaps right back. And poof. Oh, what happened? Oh, my God. I was in a trance. And now I start seeing the errors of these ways. Now I start seeing all of the propaganda. Now I start seeing all the BS. Now I start seeing all the lies. And I'm no longer in a trance anymore. And that's what a lot of people are. The normies are unfortunately the majority. The ones who are the awoken is the minority, okay? And uh, like I said, I'd say maybe it's 70-30 maybe it's <laughs> in that way, right? There's about 30%. I'm pretty sure we're pretty close to 
one third of the planet, at least, that is much more in the awoken state, okay? And just helping each other to wake up, right? And I think it may be getting close to half the population. That's pretty good. But again, we still have a lot more normies here. And that again is the plan, is just to make as much noise as possible because in front of the scenes, this is the strategy. This is why I say it's a Hollywood soundstage. That's why I say there's pyrotechnics. That's why I say it's a three ring circus because these are all engineered to say, okay, well, people still aren't getting, okay, let's make it worse. Go tell their prime minister that they're going to create a carbon tax. Go tell their prime minister that they're going to hike things up 23%. Go tell the prime minister of their country to start stealing funds out of people's pensions as we get into 2025. And that's going to piss a lot of people off. And what's up? <gasps> We're woke. We're out of here. So even though all the horrible things you're seeing in front of the scenes are happening, they're actually a blessing in disguise because the worsening of what they get is snapping you out of a trance and you standing up and saying no. Let's look into the example of the Iron Lady, Margaret Thatcher, going back into the 1980s, where she was basically looking to tax people to high heaven. And people stood up and they said no. And they thought that this woman would never bend. It's exactly why they called her the Iron Lady. Not only did they say no, they took her completely out of commission. Taking her completely out of the fold altogether. Guess what, guys? That's a repeat of what's happening right now. People will stand up. They will get out of their trance and they will say, no, hell no. We're not going to follow that. And not only are we not going to follow that, we're going to do everything to make sure you get out of power. That's what's happening. That's what's happening pretty much with the majority of countries all over the world is it's the Iron Lady Margaret Thatcher situation where you're seeing the Iron Lady melt. You're seeing her completely and totally decay. And that's exactly what's going to happen to these leaders because like I said, a lot of these leaders aren't even the actual people anymore. Do you think Justin Trudeau is actually Justin Trudeau? It's not. He has about three or four avatars. Do you think Joe Biden is the real Joe Biden? No. That's a Hollywood actor, okay? A lot of these people are avatars. A lot of these people are doppelgangers who are reading off a script and trying to make it feel like they're in control and they're the head honcho and all that. They're not. They're actors reading a script, and that's it. And there's probably a couple different avatars for every leader on the planet right now, all right? All right, let's take a look at some more questions here. Uh, there's a lot, <laughs> boy, there's a lot here. Um, okay. Gail Balancer says, according to Phil G, I have no idea who Phil G is. Uh, the U S Republic joined the BRICS nation yesterday. What a game changer to flip the table on the feds, fiat and cabal truly exciting time. Okay. So I have no idea who Phil G is, but we'll take a look at that and just see if there's a confirmation about that. Is it true? that the U.S. Republic joined the BRICS nations yesterday. Let's take a look. Let's see what the cards say. <clears throat> okay. Well, I'm getting that this is the current. Okay, so representing the United States. It feels like they are moving into something new, okay? And like I said, this could be behind closed doors. It doesn't feel like this is something that's publicly mentioned, right? Something that's publicly revealed. And it still feels like it's kind of a balancing act. I would say that there's a process of that happening. I would say it's happening right now, right? I'd say it's in a process of something like that happen. I think it needs to be finalized with someone like Trump if he gets back into the White House, okay? Uh, the past... So basically, we could say that this is the complete and total end of a de democratic or a corporate America, right? That's been dead for a couple of years now, okay? So that's true, that the idea of a democratic or corporate America is dead, okay? And that the idea of it being a republic is definitely true, okay? So that's, that's what I'm getting to as well, is that the idea of United States being a republic now officially is indeed true, okay? In the future, something like that I feel is going to be happening. Okay. I don't feel like it's happened yet, but I feel like BRICS, literally, 
bricks are being laid out to in time bring about the United States into the fold. Okay. I don't think it's happening yet. It's in the work in process and some things need to happen behind the scenes before that can fully officially take place. So I would say it's much more correct in saying that the Republic of the United States is considering in the process of going with BRICS nations, but they are not there yet. Okay. Be careful with people's news, guys. Like I said, even my own. Like I said, I listen to what certain people are saying, and I say, mm, I would say maybe you're half right. Maybe you're half correct. This is why I say, guys, you got to get out of beliefs with people. Okay. Because they have some sort of following. Like, again, with me, guys, I got almost 70,000 subscribers on YouTube. I don't want any of you guys to be believers. I want you guys to question me. Brad, hang on. Are you full of shit here for a second? Hang on. <laughs> because this is what I'm getting. Oh, okay, great. Interesting. I'd like to hear it. Right? I would rather have people oppose me and give me constructive criticism on what I'm sharing than someone who's coming over to me and trying to kiss my ass. Right? Be careful. Be careful with people. That's the whole idea. And this is where I say it's very important to have your discernment. Like I said, what is your own wisdom telling you? What is your own intuitive impulse telling you? Because maybe there's something that's conflicting with my own. I said, that's fine, guys. Because all I'm giving you guys is a perspective. I am not saying that this stuff is the gospel, right? Just what I'm getting from my perspective, I would say Phil Dree is half right. He's half correct but he's not fully correct, not from what I'm getting from my own perspective, and that's where I'm coming from. So the saying that he, they came in yesterday and they joined the BRICS nation, no, they didn't. Nope. They're in the process of that happening. Okay, it's something that's in the works, but they have to get out of something first before they can now go towards the BRICS. So I would not agree with him with that. I would say he's half correct. He's 50% correct. So again, guys, this is what I'm talking about is with the sermon. And I'm not doing that to put the fellow down. I'm sure he's a wonderful guy. But I'm basically talking about their intel. And with all due respect, guys, a lot of people's intel is a bunch of crap. Okay? And like I said, I'm sure that they want these things to happen. And I'm sure they may be getting sources. But who's to say that those sources themselves aren't uh, disinfo agents? Right? My one and only source is in here. I don't get it from some other guy. I don't get it from some other girl. I don't get it from some guy who's working in underground intelligence and stuff. Why well, would make me think I would trust that person? But I can trust my source because my source is me. It only represents the truth. That's my source, right? And that's why I give that perspective out. And I said, I'm not going to some person. I don't have some informant on the inside. How do I know I could trust that person? I can't, right? This is the thing with a lot of people who think, oh, I have a source. I have a, I have an info agent. So, well, how do you know he's not bullshitting you? How do you know he's not pulling your leg? How do you know he's not telling you what you want to hear? You don't. And that's the problem with informants. That's the problem with info agents. You don't know what their true agenda is, right? Maybe if you're able to go into them psychically and look into all that stuff, you probably can but there becomes a, a time where you have that natural discernment where you can look at a person and they're, they're maybe they're a great person, but the information that they share is wrong. Okay. Gail, I know you're excited about this, but I'm telling you just from my own perspective, he's not correct. Okay. He's half correct. He's half right. Okay. So there's, there's a goodness to that. That's great. Okay. Be careful. Guys, be careful with people like that, right? That again, just have these information, stuff like that. Verify through yourself. Verify with yourself. Even with what I tell you, verify it. It's like I said, I'm not concerned about a person who believes me or not. I don't care. I don't care about beliefs. I'm working to clear away a lot of mine, right? What I care about is that you've looked into your own source and you're finding something that's simpatico with the source that I'm sharing with. I care about that, right? Because that's equal empowerment. That's equal strength. That is what's going to make your life so much more fruitful is when you trust this and you need to build a relationship with this 
with your own source that only radiates the truth. It knows nothing of lies, right? That's where I work to come from. Okay, let's go through. We got a lot of comments. <laughs> we got people on uh, YouTube. We got people on uh, Rumble, right? And so, like I said, there's a lot of lot of comments here. So, okay, this is this is really long. I don't think I've seen such a long chat. <laughs> Let me scroll down to the bottom because we are running out of time. Here we only got a couple of minutes. Um, okay, here's the. I think I'll talk to Linda here about her question. Linda says, Brad, what are your thoughts or insights into our Axe the Tax rallies across Canada? West of Calgary is going fairly strong. I was there again yesterday. Okay, interesting. Well, let's take a look firstly at this whole Axe the Tax phenomenon, okay? Uh, how will the Axe the Tax movement, because it basically is a movement, right? How will the Axe the Tax situation fare in regards to the carbon tax that's taking place right now? Okay, let's take a look at seeing how the lifespan, how the momentum, how the success will be of the whole ax to tax movement and what we can look forward to. Okay. Let's take a look at that because that's just kind of more of a broader question. I think that will help everybody in Canada. Right? Let's take a look. And again, everything is my perspective, my point of view for all knowledge, all information, all creation itself resides in your very hearts, beings, and souls. Disclaimer. Okay. <laughs> all right. So the whole axe to tax movement, how will it fare? How will it go? How will things move in the direction? Okay. All right. Okay. So it's a very good organic movement. Okay. It is something that's organic. It's not something that is dark force controlled in the background. Okay. This is something that is actually organic. It kind of reminds me of the freedom convoys. Okay. So there's a genuine movement to that for the axe to tax situation, okay? We have the situation, well, it's basically bringing about an alchemy, okay? So there's a synthesis that's going on. There's an alchemy that's taking place, okay? Uh, like I said, it's going very fairly strong around Calgary. That's great, okay? And I feel it's going to be going stronger too across the, across the provinces. I do feel it's going to take a little bit of time though, because I think still there's a lot of people who are brainwashed in Canada, who basically don't know what's actually going on and they think that there's still trust in the government. There's still a lot of trust in the government in Canada. A lot of that trust in the government comes from the senior population, okay? A lot of the seniors in Canada are still very much still relying, come on, this needs to happen for a reason and they're still very much on the carbon tax bandwagon, right? And that's why there's confusion. There's people switching and then there's people arguing, people switching and people arguing. People fighting against axe attacks, people for axe attacks, people against Justin Trudeau, people for Justin Trudeau. And that's where we're seeing a back and forth confusion here. Right? It's the idea of many voices overlapping for a person to decide, where do I go? What do I do? Okay. In the near future, this is going to be about bring about something fruitful. I don't feel it's going to be the deciding factor to actually clear the tax. Okay. Because there's so much smearing. There's so much smearing. Uh, through media, right, through the politicians in that sense. And it really is a heartbreaking situation, okay? And I think they're going to try and do everything they can to dismantle this movement, right? They will try and put a lot of backdoor traps, and they will do everything they can to, to basically silence the people. But the good news is that even if they silence it, the damage has been done, the positive damage has been done, that will completely and totally abolish the tax, Okay. So I feel like the axe to tax movement is a catalyst. I don't feel like it's going to be the result of the carbon tax being eliminated, but I feel it's a catalyst, okay? And I just feel like there's going to be a lot of sabotage behind the scenes. I feel like they'll try and get the police involved, and they'll try and barricade people from going all the way to Ottawa, right? They're trying to keep people out from going to Ottawa. And there's going to be a lot of enforcement about that, okay? But people are going to make enough noise that's going to serve as a catalyst to make a difference so that the entire carbon tax gets neutralized. I do see it getting neutralized. I do feel like this needs to play out a few months for a few more months. It might go into the summer as well too. But I do feel like there will be so much pressure. Like I said, we're the pressure that's shaping that coal to where it finally breaks and out comes the diamond. Well, this is the pressure right now, okay? And that pressure is gonna be enough so the coal now starts to chip away, starts to break and segregate, and behold, we have the diamond, okay? So yes, so I do feel it's a catalytic 
situation with the axe attacks movement. I think it would be very helpful. Like I said, it wasn't the Freedom Convoy itself that was responsible for the complete and total nullifying of the COVID lockdowns. That came through added pressure. And I think this is going to be the same thing. It'll be added pressure that will therefore culminate with different catalysts together that will completely nullify the taxes. Okay. So that tax is not going to last. It's still going to play itself out here for a few more months, but it's not going to last for the long term. That's what I'm getting for it. Okay. Okay, guys, we'll take one more question and we're going to wrap up because we're getting out of time here. Okay. Let me just take a look and see. We got so many comments, guys. I'm very happy to see it. Glad to see you guys are so active today. Um, okay, yeah. So Colette had the question about the bricks, so we just took, we just covered that. Um, okay, let's go down more. You guys are just having a conversation here, so <laughs> I'd hate to butt in. Um, let's see here. I'm just trying to scroll right down to the bottom because there's so much comments here. Okay. Okay. So just give me a moment here. I'm just seeing a lot of comments, guys. I'm not really seeing a lot of questions, okay? Um, other than the questions about the bricks. Um, okay, I think we'll end with this one here. This one's from Burgundy Rose. Now, I'm not bringing Adronis in for signpost, guys. Adronis is only for wisdom transmissions, okay? But I will elaborate on things that he said. Uh, Burgundy says, can you please look into the nature of the event that Adronis said would happen around the summer, okay? Now, he, he really gave... Uh, kind of an open-ended idea for a reason, right? He's not trying to give you specifics to get an idea of what to expect, especially with this channel because thousands of people watch this. He does that for a reason. It's kind of like going back into 2020 before COVID happened. He said something was going to take place that would change the landscape of your planet. And what we're doing right now is we're helping to give you this exercise so that you can rise above it and surf this wave that's coming. Right? He never really mentioned, quote unquote, coronavirus or COVID, but he said that there was a large event that was coming and he's helping to move us up into a certain momentum to surf the wave. And that's basically what he's doing here in that sense. Now, what he did talk about is that it's, it could be something localized. OK, this could be something in regards to a financial scandal. OK, this could be something in regards to political leaders. This could be the idea in that sense of attempting to bring about a particular type of war, okay? So it could be a couple of different things. And that's basically what he was alluding to. It feels like, again, there will be a couple of events, couple of areas that are affected on the planet, but the entire world will be aware of it. So my feeling is it could be something financial related. It could be something in regards to a man-made disaster. There could also be something in that sense pertaining to a very large scandal of well-respected leaders on the planet that could go awry. Okay, and basically having a gigantic smear campaign taking place. So these are the possibilities. But again, he's not going to elaborate too much on these things. It's kind of like we have to let things play out. There's a possibility for several different events that could take the role of that one big event that's coming. But the one big event that's coming looks like it's going to happen in some sort of isolated area or maybe a couple of isolated areas. It could also be something viral related. It could be something health related. Okay. But these are the possibilities. We could be looking at something pertaining to a financial crisis. We could be looking at something pertaining to a viral outbreak. We could be looking at a gigantic scandal where people who have been, quote unquote, highly respected are now getting exposed. And it's going to lead to perhaps certain tribunals. There could also be a man-made disaster that's happening. Okay. These are the possibilities. We don't have the idea of isolating one on top of it. But these are, again, situations that are looking to manifest and what actually does manifest in the summer is, again, where the stars align for that certain uh, alignment to come about. But we don't know. I don't really have an answer in the saying about one particular thing. It could be a few different things. If you want, I can look into the tarot, right? And maybe we can get more of a hint about what can be shared pertaining to what, we, what could happen pertaining to a major event that is taking place in the summertime. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Let's see if the tarot has anything to share as well. And this will be the last question. This is what we're going to end on. Okay. Yeah. The cards are going crazy right now. I can hardly shuffle them. <laughs> okay. So we'll take a look at this, what this one big major event could possibly be. Oh, I'm bending my cards here. Oh, okay. Let's see what this one major event could possibly be through the tarot. 
right, so I asked Atero, what could the major event that Adronas talked about be that will be coming here around the summertime of 2024? Let's take a look. Okay. It's something really good. That's the whole idea. This looks like a positive. This could be, again, like I said, a big bombshell announcement. This is something that's going to impact the world, exactly what Adrona said, that there's going to be some type of event that's going to, intact, that's going to impact the entire planet with this information being shared. Okay. When we're looking at the situation, this is a revealing. This is an innovation. This could be something of an exposure that comes about. Okay, a big exposure, a big revealing. It feels like it's something quite positive, though. I don't feel like it's something detrimental leading to a lockdown or anything like that. But Adronis just said that this is a major event that is really going to shift the landscape of the planet. That's going to be happening approximately around the time of the summer. Okay. And so we're getting here, we're getting the Knight of Swords, okay? So Swords is all about thought, it's all about idea, innovation, revealing of some big knowledge, okay? The past is that this is something that has looked to come out for quite some time. This is something that's been kind of waiting in the wings for a while and looks like something is going to come about. And it's going to be something that I think we could actually celebrate, although some people may not see it that way. It may be something in a sense very, very big. It feels like a giving back. Okay. Some sort of big major event that whatever this information is that's going to be spilt, it's a giving back to people. It's kind of a give and take. Right? Near future feels like this is something that has been engineered. It feels like something this has been, again, like I said, in preparation for quite some time. And like I said, I feel like maybe it might be a revealing of a new technology. Maybe it's a revealing in that sense of a new system that's coming about as well too. But it's going to be smeared. Okay, There's going to be some smear campaigns with it. But the smear campaigns are really not going to be successful. It could be an extraterrestrial contact. We could be looking at another particular type of extraterrestrial sighting. We could be looking at a big type of disclosure that's coming in because this basically tells me disclosure. This tells me something in regards to an exposure, a disclosure, something really, really big that is going to really shake the bedrock of the entire planet that is going to happen perhaps in one area or a couple of areas. And like I said, this is something that has been engineered. This is something that has been manifested. Maybe something that has been prepared for quite some time. But like I said, there's going to be some shaky ground with it. There's going to be trying to be a lot of denial. But it's going to be undeniable. Whatever is happening, whatever is looking to happen. So it's not to say the things that I've talked about that are a possibility won't happen. They still could be. But this feels like something very, very positive for humanity. Okay, We could be looking a lot more about ET technology. We could be looking at new innovations coming together. We may start to look at the idea of change of governments. Maybe there's a big, gigantic uh, situation that will unfold that is going to change the governments of the world, right? So I guess we'll just have to see. <laughs> so I'm still not even really getting a definite answer for the cards. It could still be a couple of different things. But the summer is not too far away, so we're just going to have to kind of keep our eyes peeled. But it feels like something that is going to be very beneficial for humanity that is going to shake the bedrock of the earth of what is gonna transpire here this summer, okay? Adronis has also talked about the inverted winter solstice that's coming because that too is a gateway leading to something even better that's gonna unfold in 2025. So interesting times ahead, my friends. We just gotta keep our eyes on, on, the, uh, on the situations, right? Keep our hands on the horn and start honking when we see something really incredible that we need to share with everybody, all right? Thank you very much, Burgundy. Thank you, everybody, for joining me today for the signposts. And I'll speak to you all next week. So, again, new times next week, Wednesday and Thursday. We'll be starting at 8 a.m. Pacific time. Okay, that's 11 a.m. Eastern. So I look forward to seeing you all then. Blessings to you all. Take care. Namaskar. And may it be well with you. Bye for now.